Monday. Welcome and glad you're here. Are you ready for Christmas? Have you gotten things in order? I know I haven't, so I always am the last minute. Any rate, it's good to have you here. I'm glad you're with us. Come on in. And welcome to the second Sunday of Advent, where we remember and celebrate the gift of peace that God offers us. Oh, come desire of nations, bind all peoples in one heart and mind. From dust thou brought us forth to life. Deliver us from earthly strife. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to you, O Israel. And here is your call to worship. In the beginning was the word spoken, creating the world. Jesus, you are the word of God. The word gives life. That life is light. Jesus, the darkness cannot put out your light. At the beginning of our time, speak, shake our worlds. Jesus, we are hungry for your word of life. We cannot live by food alone. Jesus, we wait on the words that come from the mouth of God. The word became life in its flesh and blood. And moved into our neighborhood. It's time for us to put flesh on your word. That we might be your hands and feet in our homes, jobs, and streets. We will worship the Lord and serve him only. We will let our light shine in the darkness. And the world might see and be transformed and praise our Creator in heaven. Amen. gives us another gift. <laughs> Does anybody remember what gift this is? What gift is it? Hope. God gives us the gift of hope. Now there's another gift that God gives us. One's hope. Let's see if we can guess what the next one would be. What you got, honey? Love. Love! Boy, you are so close. You are so close. You hold on to that thought, okay? You hold on to that. What do you think? Light. Light. Nope. Friendliness. Friendliness. These are all really good gifts. But what, what I'll tell you is, it's about peace. Peace! Peace. Does everybody want peace in the world? Yeah! Yeah! No, 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 no more fighting? Okay. Now we're going to listen to Flo and what she has to say about peace. Okay? You ready? Mm -hmm. All right. Here we go. Hi, my name is Flo, and I've been a member of Battleground United Methodist Church since last spring. Pastor Susan asked me to talk about the gift of peace in my life. And in thinking about what I could share with you, um, I have to say that I look back and have had a very blessed life and not a lot of hardships to go through. But about 15 years ago, when our boys were very small, I had a medical scare that was, had the potential to be significant, even terminal. And I had to wait for two, a week to find out the results of the testing, and I was a mess. I couldn't sleep. 
I couldn't eat, I didn't tell anyone, I didn't even tell my husband because I was so afraid of what was to come. And I was struggling. Finally, I just thought, I've gotta give this to the Lord. And I went to church in the middle of the week and I walked into a small room that had a bench with a, with a pillow and a stained glass of the Lord with light behind it. And I just kneeled on that bench and I just said, I'm okay with whatever happens, Lord. I really am, but I'm just giving this to you because I can't do it alone. And it was like immediately the weight was just lifted off me and my heart wasn't beating fast anymore. I, I wasn't shaking. I could breathe. I was... I was totally at peace, and it was absolutely amazing, and I thought, why didn't I do that <laughs> a week ago? So, obviously, things worked out, and I was blessed once again, but the peace that the Lord can give us is just beyond understanding. It truly is a gift. It's nothing we can do for ourselves, so... I just want to end with just part of John 14, 27. My peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Candle light, sacred light, mystery flames burning bright. We are waiting for Jesus' new birth. Shine his peace. Let us pray. The nights have drawn in. Long summer evenings are but memory. Winter is upon us and darkness surrounds us. We wait in darkness, Lord, for the coming of your light. Our world is shadowed in darkness of oppression, of pessimism, of helplessness. We wait in hope, Lord, for the coming of your light. Souls are overwhelmed by gloom and darkness, depression and hopelessness, saturated in despair. We wait with them in their darkness, trusting in your promise that yours is a light that no darkness can overcome. And we lift this prayer with the power of Jesus the prayer of the word, the prayer of all creation, the prayer of the Christ from the beginning of time. Let us pray. Life giver, lover of us all, upon your holy name we call. Your new day come, your will be done on earth as in all realms beyond. We pray this day for bread to live. Forgive our sins as we forgive. And give us strength in time of test. Grant us release from evil's death. For all the cosmos is your own your power of love which we have known, the splendor radiant without end. To God be praise. Amen. Amen. <laughs>
During our Advent weeks, our scripture will all come from the Gospel of John, chapter 1. We will be offering these words of God using Lectio Divina. Please close your eyes, listen carefully to the words, and allow what will rise up to rise up. In the second reading, you may contemplate another word or phrase in the same or different way. The hope is that you will all hear these sacred words with a seriousness and intention that can be absorbed into our whole very being. Prepare yourself for the gospel. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. What has come into being in him was life. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. We are continuing today with a Christmas story, a Christmas story that might not be so familiar. And this Christmas story is a prologue from the Gospel of John. And so in this passage that we listened to and absorbed in our Lectio Divina, it was in, two ideas were introduced. The first being that the holy light is coming. The holy light is coming and it will shine in this darkness. It's coming and it will shine in this darkness. And the second thing that this passage wants us to know is that there was this man who somehow, who knows how, somehow had this divine knowledge that this light was on its way and this light would be revealing itself to the world very, very soon. So in the Gospel of John, in the prologue, in his Christmas story, there is no Zechariah, there is no pregnant Elizabeth who had to be 80 years old. There is no virgin teenager. There is no, no um, uh, baby in Elizabeth's tummy that does cartwheels because the Holy One, Jesus, enters the room in Mary's tummy. None of those stories. There's no angels. There's no shepherds. There's no Bethlehem. There's no donkeys. 
John's Christmas story has no shepherds, no wise men following a star. And if John's gospel were a pageant, if I were to create a Christmas pageant from God's, John's gospel, I would simply have a single voice in, on a stage with the curtain drawn down and the spotlight on her, and I would have her sing the prologue to John. In fact, the prologue is thought to be a hymn itself. We don't know the tune, but the words are in fact a hymn that was, that was sung 2,000 years ago. And so as we continue to contemplate this cosmic Christ in this kind of Christmas, we are going to consider this character that we know in the other gospel stories. And this character's name is John. And John, it turns out, is the son of Zechariah and Elizabeth and is Jesus' cousin. And John comes before Jesus, and he ends up being a witness. A witness who acts as a bridge in some way between Christ and the Incarnation. Jesus and the Incarnation. This bridge begins with cousin John calling out, telling everyone it's coming, preparing the world for this light that will reveal itself. Now we tend to need, I tend to need, I think most humans tend to need um, some kind of heads up before something big happens. You know, maybe we just need to prepare our small minds to be able to comprehend something big that's coming. So, for example, if I'm heading home for Thanksgiving and I am not prepared for what I will face, then when I walk into my parents' home to share the time with my parents, my brothers and sisters, my nieces and nephews, and I see my father not being prepared for what I would see, it would be very difficult. It would, I might not believe that it's actually true. But when my sister shares with me before I come home to Thanksgiving what I should expect, I can walk in the door and greet everyone and hug my father and know what's going on. This is exactly what John the Baptist did. He needed to prepare us for something big to happen, because if he didn't prepare us, it would be very difficult for us to see what is before us. It's kind of like looking at one of those posters with lots of little dots in it, and there's an image that when you first look at it, you can't see the image and you're struggling and struggling and you can't see the image and then you're given a hint. All right. It looks like an elephant. And so you're looking at the poster with all of those dots, and there you see the elephant. Well, John the Baptist was the person who told me to look for an elephant. And then I could see the elephant. That's, in fact, what I think that John the Baptist did. I think that that was his job. I think that. He was put on this earth to inform us of what is going to happen. And then he observes what is happening. Something wonderful, the light. 
and the light even came right to John at the Jordan River, and that light asked John to baptize him. Last week, we looked at the power of the gift of hope, and Eric did a wonderful job sharing his story of hope. And this week, we're going to look at the power of the gift of peace that God offers us. Obviously, we are, I don't think very many people would disagree with me, but we really are in pretty dark times right now. And we are waiting. That, that's what Advent is teaching us. It's teaching us how to wait. How to wait when things are hard. And so this season, it teaches us. And so maybe, maybe, we could look at this season as something that will teach us, and maybe in teaching us, we might learn something. We might find something out about ourselves and about one another. We might understand something about God that we did not understand before. Perhaps this is the first year you truly understand the concept of the season of Advent. Why? Because we are experiencing Advent right now. You know, Christmas Day is coming. It is just a few weeks away. And wouldn't it be wonderful if the light of God came to us on that day? That the light of God shone and the darkness went away. But you and I know that that's not what's going to happen because, unless it happens miraculously, but it's not going to happen on December 25th because Christmas and Advent, all of these things are symbolic. They are symbols of our journey living on earth. Waiting, Advent, is a symbol of part of what it means to be a human being. Christmas and the light being brought into the world is a symbol of when things are really hard, the light does shine and dispel the darkness. The babe in the manger is a symbol. So Christmas Day can happen on January 31, May 15th. What if Christmas Day happened on the same day as uh, the 4th of July? Christmas Day can happen any day, not just December 25th. The day we celebrate December 25th is, a, is the day that we are reminded that when times are dark, we can remember the light is coming. It is coming. And it will, in fact, dispel the darkness. Our anxiety at this time is elevated a great deal, a lot of depression, a lot of mental illness, a lot of addiction, a lot of ways people are not handling this darkness very well. But John the Baptist and his witness that the light is coming, it gives us hope. It gives us hope that one day, one day soon, the light will come into this world, into our lives, into some of this mess that we find ourselves in. And I'm not just talking about Battleground or the United States, I'm talking about the world, of course. We can be assured that this is all going to end one day. 
maybe not tomorrow, but we are promised by John the Baptist that the light is coming. And I believe him. I believe scripture. I believe John the Baptist when he lets us know that even when we are in the darkest pit, light is coming. So let me remind you, there was a man sent by God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light, the true light, which enlightens everyone. And that light was coming into the world. May this light come sooner rather than later. And we prepare ourselves within the darkness that light is on its way. Amen. And here is our offertory. In response to the promise of God, let us give thanks through the presentation of our gifts and offerings. What gift can we bring? What present? What token, what words can convey it, the joy of this day? When grateful we come, remembering, rejoicing, what song can we offer in honor and praise? Please bow your heads in prayer. God of hopeful waiting, we give thanks for all the ways in which you reveal yourself to us. Help us to clear away the many distractions of this season and offer our whole lives as gifts to you. May these offerings nurture all of the ways in which your promise is breaking into the world in acts of compassion and justice. May these gifts nurture your rule of peace. Amen. And let us now enter into our final benediction. The land is our light and our help, calling us to look beyond the darkness to the promise of the coming. We wait in hope for the coming of Christ. The world groans in darkness, 
yearning to give birth to a new and eternal creation. We wait in hope for the coming of Christ. Overwhelmed souls and hearts hardened through suffering yearn for the warmth and touch of your love. We wait in hope for the coming of Christ. And as we wait in joyful hope, we ask God to bless and keep us, the Creator, the Redeemer, and the Sustainer. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hand. Amen. 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 Longing for light, we wait in darkness. Longing for truth, we turn to you. Make us your own, your holy people, light for be